welcome back here to the channel Stapaoli Azul and Super Academico and today we're going to keep on our playlist from the book New Rules of Sociological Methods from the author Anthony Giddens for those that are not subscribed to the channels please subscribe they're both good channels my channel Super Academico and my son's channel Stapaoli Azul are great channels with contents of academic na nature in my my case and entertainment games in the case of my son's channel Tá Paulo Azul So uh what else I do uh please uh besides subscribing to the channels give likes to our videos and share and comments to to help our channels to grow So let's go in the last video we talked about the the identification of x and agency if you don't remember please take a look at the last video the number five today is the number six video of the series eh, of this playlist and today we're, to, we're going to talk about in the same chapter né, agency act identifications communicate communicative intent communicative intent the topic of the rationalization the, the rationalization of action so it's the way that we rationalize our actions first highlight act identifications often serve as adequate response to why questions referring to human conduct so when we identify ourselves in some action uh, in the act that we did we often rationalize the 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 the, the, the why we did such action it's a, a way of deal and accept the way things were uh, the things went distinctions distinctions between purpose reasons and motives are also fuzzy in everyday discourse these terms are quite often interchangeable so people used to use purpose reasons and motives uh, meaning the same thing human agents are able to monitor their activities as various current concurrent flows so human agents us uh, we are able to monitor and uh, to, to watch uh, our activities as various uh, different concurrent flows in different ways of seeing uh, different flows of different ways of seeing. we see this as a science we see this as a father you see this as a consumer so these different flows uh, affects the way that we uh, rationalize the action uh, the rationalization uh, the rationalization of conduct express the causal cause cause anchoring of agency in tying purpose to the conditions of their realization within ongoing practices of day-to-day -day life so this is very important this highlight and because you see uh, when we rationalize something that we did right? the conducts uh, we we put that's the way he says an anchor in the in the meaning of what we did to to join and to tie the purpose and the purpose to the conditions of what we thought inside you know, realizing within the the things that we see eh, in everyday life for example when we uh when we punish uh our children for example we often act in the way 
that the punishment uh, is something that we do in response to the action of the child. So it's an act of the moment, mostly uh, act by some emotion, uh, some some angry, uh, some some uh, some uh, some emotion that says that the ch the children, the the child should not do that. So we react emotionally, doing the punishment. Later, uh, we tend to rationalize this by saying that the punishment that we did was a way to help the, the, the children eh, to grow, help the child to grow, to learn, is a, as if the punishment was some kind of an education, educational process. Uh, I, I don't, I, I'm not saying that it's not educational. I'm saying that that's the way we rationalize the process of the act that we did especially when we do with our own children meaning and communica communicative intent so the intentions that we have as we communicate things not uh, not uh, necessarily has to do with the the meaning of the message we may ask such why questions about we want to know why a man said something rather than why he did something in particular about his communicative intent. So uh, uh, the why questions is a response to an action and most, most, uh, most of all, uh, a response to the, 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 the thing that the person said about his action why why did you do that why did you act that that way there is an obvious convergence between recent work in the philosophical language and the ideas developed by Chomsky known Chomsky and his followers on transmissional grammars see language use as a skilled skilled and creative performance so uh, Noam Chomsky is known uh, for his works in in uh, many many areas, but mostly uh, about the the use of language to processing things in a society, in the way that language helps a society to learn and grow as itself to to develop. Uh, like a natural language, a language of self-learning, something like that. I, I really, uh, I confess, I'm not a, an expert. An ex I'm not an expert in anything, really. But I'm not a, a, a very well known of the work of Noam Chomsky. I just know him. I uh, know uh, the, 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 the field that he develops his thinking. And so, uh, this assuming this uh, this theory, uh, this contribution of Don Jones to the philosophical language, I think that uh, Giddens is trying to say that in, to analyze, uh, to study society, we need to take a look of these performances. Uh, performances. The role of common sense understandings and the rule. No, the role, sorry, the role, the role of common sense understandings, or what I shall later refer to as taking for granted mutual knowledge in human social interaction. So, the human social interaction is full, is full with this common sense understanding, or the thing that's taken for granted, like for the, uh, take for granted by the social science scientists uh, in a way to say because is the the thing that we do more often eh? our common language common sense understandings about the things 
So when we ignore this 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 attribute of the social language eh, of the the language of the common language, we close ourselves as thinkers, eh, as uh, scholars, students, uh, uh, researchers of society, to understand better what is really going on in a society. And for finishing the chapter two, some of the basic difficulties, some of the basic difficulties of interpretative sociology to failure to cope, the failure, sorry, the failure to cope with problems of institutional organization, power and struggle as integral, integral features of social life. No? The, the power fight, the power struggle, the power and struggle, the, the presence of power relations, the struggle between actors in a society is an integral feature, feature in the social life. It's, uh, he's saying that it's ignored. Uh, maybe in, <laughs> in English language, sociology is ignored, but here in Brazil, it's not. It's the main theme of our sociology is the power relations. Um, examination of why such a reconciliation is not already to be found in those established traditions of social theory. The orthodox academic sociology of Durkheim and Parsons and the counter tradition, the opposite tradition, originating in the writings of Marx. So, he's saying he, he will return to these questions in the third chapter. So, uh, the thing is that the, the power relations that contribute to the language, I think, contribute a lot to the language, especially in a society like my society, Brazilian society, where these power relations are predominant eh, since we did, didn't learn historically how to act as citizens, participants in the society. So it, it always we have learned eh, to, to, to behave like uh, we are obeying someone more powerful in a way that every little relation in society is fueled with that. Giddens is saying that every society is this way, but the sociology of uh, the English language sociology seems to ignore that. Uh, he mentioned Durkheim and Parsons, uh, two great big uh, sociologists that worked in the way uh, of analyzing society with these big things. Uh, ignoring the individual contribution and he's saying that instead of uh, no instead of, it's not instead of uh, uh, despite of the the Marx sociology is fueled with these power relations uh, about class struggle but uh, it's not focused in the individuals uh, it's not focused in the relation and power relation between individuals but between classes so he's trying to bring this contribution to this uh, big sociology theories well let's see in the next chapters and uh, I've I haven't finished the book yet I'm in, in the mid in the in the in the end but I haven't finished yet, there's a few pages to finish, about 30 or 20 pages, less, may, maybe less. But this second chapter was very rich with new ideas. The third chapter will bring the classical sociology again with this relation, with this new contributions that he's bringing. And the fourth, is like the his contribution, his contribution, and the the, the, the final one is just the conclusions, uh, the new aspects. 
Well, uh, I don't want to get too long now. I'm just trying to say, try to say that thank you for listening to this this video, and I hope to uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channels, give the like, comments, and share the video. See you next time with this playlist or other other uh, English videos, videos in English. Bye bye.